What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is definitely going to be one that's on the longish side because we are going to be going over my favorites for the entire year of 2015. I'm one of those people that I swear I do not catch on to the year until it's basically ending. So we're going into 2016. These are going to be the favorites for 2015. And I really wanted to make it a point for this video to not only show you guys products that I liked, that were favorites, but things that I really loved and used like over 50, 60, 70 times throughout the past year. So everything that I'm gonna show you guys in today's video is products that I absolutely love and I am obsessed with. I am letting you guys know now, you're probably gonna get annoyed. There's gonna be a lot of, oh my God, best product ever, life-changing because these products that I'm gonna show you guys today are the products that pretty much I use on an every single day basis. So I wanted to kind of cover everything, skincare, makeup, um, prep, finishing the whole look, everything. Basically everything that I've been loving this year, I'm gonna be talking about in today's video, so let's get started. I think I have around 50 products that I'm gonna be showing you guys today, and these are the products, again, that I feel are life-changing. If I lost my entire makeup and beauty collection, these are the things that I would run out and buy the very same day. So again, I narrowed it down to the bare, bare minimum, but with that being said, it still is a lot. So I wanna start off with skin crep. What? Skin crep? No. I want to start off with skin prep, and the two things that have made a huge, huge difference in my life, other than the Accutane, obviously, because that can't really be a favorite, but if you guys let me slide that one in there, Accutane, definitely, huge favorite. In order to treat the scarring on my face and the uneven skin tone, um, the blotchiness, and just basically to kind of brighten my overall complexion, Retin-A, I know it's a prescription item, but I kind of have a mixture of high-end products here, drugstore things, and two prescription products because it's really not too hard to get your hands on this. Basically, you just have to go to a dermatologist and tell them that you want to be prescribed Retin-A. You guys did ask me in the last video that I brought this up, what percentage do I have? Mine is 0.025%, so it's a very, very light version of it. I have the cream, not the gel. If you have acne scarring or an uneven skin tone, I'm telling you guys, this is like my every single night, what I use in place of a moisturizer, and I really, really love it. And then another product that has been life-changing on my skin is for my under eyes, my dark circles, and it is hydroquinone. Again, really easy to get your eyes on. It's actually a skin bleaching cream that you can use on really dark scars around your face as well. Ask your dermatologist about it. They will write you up a prescription and I think I had to pay around $50 at the drugstore in order to get this. Next, the moisturizer that I have been using underneath my makeup every single day. This is the Ultra Repair Cream by First Aid Beauty and basically what this is is a moisturizer for people that have really sensitive skin, for people that have eczema, dry skin, irritated skin, and it actually has oatmeal in it. I like to use this many, many days underneath my makeup without even having to put a primer on top of it because I feel like it, it primes my skin. It's very, very soothing. I love this stuff. I don't use any other moisturizers on my face other than this. And then for underneath the eyes, the under eye moisturizer that I use pretty much all year long is by, uh, what, what are you by? This is by Made From Earth, and it's kind of like a little independent brand. You can find them online. And it is their Chamomile Eye Therapy for tired, wrinkled, and stressed eyes. I love using this every single day when I moisturize my skin. I use this to moisturize my under eyes, and I'm ready to go ahead and jump into my makeup. So. On those days when I do apply a primer, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's not every single day. I'm not one of those people that swear that you have to use a primer underneath your makeup every single day. The only time that I really use a primer is when I have like a special event going on or on a day where I know that I need my makeup to last like 10 plus hours. And there is only one primer that I trust because for me, my skin is so prone to breaking out when I put a primer on it. Like all of the primers that everybody loves and raves about here on YouTube break my skin out so bad. So this one is by L'Oreal. You can pick it up in the drugstore and it's called Miracle Blur Instant Skin Smoother. I like to use this especially on my nose and on the skin around my nose because it blurs out your pores, it fills them in. It's exactly like Benefit Pore Professional. I think that's how you say it. I get corrected all the time. The Pore Professional breaks me out all the time. The L'Oreal one does not, but I don't use it every single day because I think if I did, it would break my skin out just because think about it. It's like it's filling in the pores in your skin. It can tend to be clogging and 
I'm not gonna put a primer on my face every single day. I don't care if it makes my makeup look amazing because I'd rather my skin to be smooth and break out free. So I only use that maybe once every three months, I'm gonna say. Now we're gonna move on to lips. When I was on my Accutane medication, this stuff right here was basically the only thing that gave my lips any salvation. This is by Dr. Dan and it's called Cordobom. Basically what it is, is a chapstick. It looks so basic, like any other chapstick it has no color to it. It's kind of actually like a ugly yellowy color. It doesn't smell good at all, but it's basically a chapstick that has hydrocortisone in it. It's not something that you're supposed to use long term because I don't think that it's safe to use hydrocortisone on your lips for an extended amount of time. But this stuff right here soothed my cracked, dry, bleeding lips. It was pretty much one of the worst symptoms of being on Accutane and this stuff I found it like in the last month. Um, and I really, really do love it. So I highly, highly recommend this. I did order it on eBay. I could not find it anywhere in stores. I think it was like five bucks. All right, skin prep is done. Now we're gonna jump into makeup products. I'm gonna start off with foundation and I had to mention this. I sound like a broken record so I don't really wanna talk about it too long. You guys already know my favorite foundation. This is my Ride or Die. I used this before I started Accutane when my skin was severely broken out. It was the only thing that gave me really full coverage. Let me tell you guys what I'm talking about. The Aqua Smooth Foundation by CoverGirl. Mine is in the shade Buff Beige. So many of you guys told me that you picked this up after my review on it and that you love it as well. I use this also during Accutane and I use it now still after Accutane. You can use it to spot conceal. It has so, so high, high coverage. It dries to a, I would say a satin matte finish. I don't set it with a powder at all. I've never had to. I just love it, absolutely love it and it has never broken me out. So that one definitely I had to mention. A foundation that I use for, again, when I go to special events or if I have a meeting, not even when I'm filming because this stuff, um, it kind of, it's very drying, but if you have oily skin, this, I'm telling you, will be your new obsession. This is by Hourglass and it is called their Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation. This is a true liquid to powder foundation. I have a video all about it. I'm gonna list everything down below. And if I have any videos on these products, I'll definitely link that next to the product in the list down below. So this stuff right here, if you take a little dollop and you put it on the back of your hand and you rub it in, it will magically turn from a liquid into a powder instantly on your hand. So you don't have to set it. The coverage is medium. Buildable though, so you can get a full coverage with it. And I like to use this when I have, again, special event or when I, I really want my makeup to look extra special. Now you guys know that I have an obsession with powder foundations. I am wearing powder foundation today. I just feel like you can get such an amazing coverage pump from a powder foundation. And I'm not one of those girls that likes to sit in front of my mirror for an hour to get ready every single morning because I'm not gonna lie, I used to do that in high school and my mom and my sister would make so much fun of me. I would spend about an hour and a half getting ready, just makeup wise, getting ready for high school every single day. So now as an adult, I feel like I, I like to be quick and out the door. So I love powder foundations and I wear them pretty much almost on an every single day basis. Um, so I did have a video on this one as well. This is the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. Really, really full coverage, very long lasting, love it. And I had to mention the one that I am wearing today. I do not have a video on it. This is something that I did discover in December, so I feel a little bit guilty bringing it up, but I have been using it every single day since I got this. And this is the Urban Decay Powder Foundation. You guys, this literally air brushes my skin more so than the max studio fix more so than the kat von d powder foundation this stuff right here literally air brushes my skin out when i apply it onto my face i'm wearing it on my skin today my sideburns look weird i don't know i don't pair it with any concealer i use this alone and i'm telling you it's amazing i don't i don't know how a powder can cover so much. If you guys want a video on this, definitely let me know. Now we're gonna jump into concealers, and I had a really hard time because I, at first, was gonna show you guys my Urban Decay concealer that I've been using pretty much, I'm gonna say, for six months out of the year. Really, really popular. I also, in the beginning of the year, used to really love the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer, but when I'm honest with you guys, I think nine out of 10 times, I would always go for these concealers by Maybelline. This is the Fit Me Concealer. I am in the shade Sand, and then I use the shade Light to kind of highlight a little bit more on top 
of the sand shade and this stuff does not crease it completely covers my under eye circles and i'm going to be honest with you guys the main thing that i look for in an under eye concealer is something that is not going to crease because i have very like little wrinkly wrinkles wrinkly skin underneath my eyes and it's a big pet peeve of mine when anything creases in that area and so far out of anything high-end anything i can buy at sephora anything in the drugstore this stuff right here is the most resistant to creasing so definitely has to be my favorite up next setting powders the laura mercier setting powder i really do like for the baking method for underneath your eyes i do not apply this all over my face just because i feel like it gives a little bit too much of like a matte finish and it doesn't look very natural i will say that it does blur out pores beautifully so sometimes i will apply it just onto my nose it is a little bit on the messy side so i don't use it as often as I do my other setting powders. Another one that I really love is by NARS. This is their light reflecting setting powder. This is the pressed version because it does come in a loose version as well. And the shade is translucent crystal. It looks like a white powder. The reason that I really love this stuff is because it comes in a pressed formula. It is the only pressed powder that I carry in my bag to touch up with throughout the day. And I really like that it has that blurring property to it. As you guys can see, there's kind of a trend here. I really don't like little fine lines and I don't like the look of pores. So when I touch up with this on a daily basis, I just throw it in my bag. I can whip it out and just kind of soak up the oiliness on my face and it has a blurring property to it as well. So I really do like that. And then pretty much the only thing that I use to set underneath my eyes on an every single day basis is the ambient lighting powder in the shade diffused light. This is what it looks like right here. Again, it's another white looking powder. It's very, very reflective, but it is a matte powder. So it does reflect the light. I feel like it does brighten up my under eye area a lot. I really do love this stuff. It is around $50. So it absolutely is an investment, but it is something that I reach for all the time. So I think that's okay. If I'm gonna invest money in something, you would think that you would want it to be something that you don't reach for every day so that it can last longer. But I feel like if I'm gonna spend $50 on a product, I want to love it so much that I am reaching for it every single day. So what we're going to talk about next is bronzers. These are basically the only two bronzers that I use the entire year. I have a high-end one and I have a drugstore one. So the high-end one is by Hourglass. It is called their Luminous Bronze Light. It's another ambient lighting powder, but it is a bronzer formula. And I really like it because it has a beautiful reflective sheen to it. So if you really like that J-Lo type of glow, I think that you will absolutely love this stuff. This is, it comes in a light and I think a medium. This is the lighter shade and I really, really like it a lot. It kind of just airbrushes my skin out. I'm very, very big on like a flawless canvas skin is really important to me as you guys see a lot of these products are skin related the bronzer that I also loved a lot especially during the beginning of the year is actually not a bronzer it is a foundation powder so it adds a little bit of coverage while also warming up my face and this is the true match powder in w8 by l'oreal this is a very warm shade so it definitely makes me look like i have a beautiful tropical tan and i love the fact that it adds a little bit of coverage on top of giving me that color highlight the only two highlights that I used again this year. As you guys can see, I am very much a creature of habit. When I find something that I love, I want to use it every single day. When I find a song that I'm obsessed with, I want to listen to it 10 times every single day. When I find a show that I like, I want to sit and binge watch it every single day. So makeup is no different for me. And I think every single day since I picked up the Becca uh, Jaclyn Hill collab, the Champagne Pop highlight, Basically, this is all I used. It is so absolutely gorgeous. No matter what your skin tone is, if you have a light skin tone, medium skin tone, dark skin tone, I feel like the way this is formulated, the color, everything is spot on. I love it so, so much. I have about five backups of this. The other highlighter that I was pretty much obsessed with before that one was the Mary Luminizer. This is shattered and I still have not gotten around to um, to fixing it yet so let's see how I can kind of swatch this for you guys as you guys can see it's another very out there type of highlight this is kind of like a white gold I really love my highlights to stand out a lot and kind of have like a wet look to them so these two really I don't feel like I need to try any other highlighters these these were created for me absolutely 
absolutely obsessed with them. So the only thing that I use throughout the year, and I did just get a brand new one, so this one is all pretty. This does tend to get a little bit powdery and dusty once you have it in your collection for a while. This is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. Contour and Highlight Palette. This is what the palette looks like inside. I'm sure that you guys are so familiar with this. Pretty much everyone and their mama raves about this palette. I really like the highlight shades because they're very, very creamy and they definitely highlight my under eye area. I like to mix the neutral one as well as the yellow one and pop that underneath my eye after I've concealed and it really does brighten up my face. And then as far as the contours, I like to use this one right here to kind of sculpt out my cheekbone and I've actually used the two ones right here as bronzers all over my face and I'm actually using the darkest shade right here as an eyeshadow today. So this palette is very, very versatile. I love it. I reach for it all the time and I'm very happy to have a brand new fresh and clean one. Next we are going to move on to blushes and I was going to reach for my Tarte blushes and show those to you guys but when I sit down and I'm like, what do you really use on an every single day basis? It is the CoverGirl blushes, not because the formula is anything all that amazing, but because of these two colors. I will list the colors right here. One is kind of a bronzy type of color and the other one is a pink color. And these both have a beautiful sheen to them that sometimes when I apply them, I don't even have to go in and highlight on top because they add such a beautiful glow onto the face. So I love these. I also love to use the bronzy one as an every single day eyeshadow. And actually the next item that I'm gonna show you guys, because I'm actually not gonna show you guys a whole bunch of eyeshadows because if I'm being honest with myself, I don't wear eyeshadow on an every single day basis. I focus primarily on my skin and then I will put a very light wash of eyeshadow over my eyes. You guys ask all the time what I use. So again, it does fluct fluct fluctuate on an everyday basis and for the majority of my videos, it does fluctuate between Iced Cappuccino Blush by CoverGirl and I know I'm so weird, I don't use eyeshadows for eyeshadows. I use other facial products for eyeshadow. The Ambient Lighting Powder in Radiant Light. It's a huge, huge palette. I love to use this on my eyes. It kind of just evens out my eyelid. It adds a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of like a peachy hint of color. I love it. And you guys ask me about this all the time. Next up is brows. And I do have an appointment, I believe on the 25th of this month to go ahead and get my brow tattoos touched up. I know that you guys are waiting for a video on that. I am gonna be vlogging that day. I will bring you along so don't worry I have not forgotten I get so many questions and comments asking when that video is coming I have not forgotten it's in the works but what I do love using on my brows every single day is by Tarte it's their Amazonian clay volumizing brow powder I don't know how brow powder can be volumizing but you know what it is I don't know if it's the clay particles this is in the shade black brown it is the perfect perfect color for me since I picked up this product, I don't use anything else. And the brow gel that I use to set it is the one by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's called the Tinted Brow Gel in the shade Espresso. This is kind of like hairspray for my eyebrows. My brows are basically bulletproof with this and this can't go wrong. Mascara, I am only going to mention one mascara because it is my absolute holy grail. I think that I did a video on this, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. The Voluminous Miss Manga Rock Mascara. This one is not in the waterproof version. Since I started perming my eyelashes, which I do have a video on, and that should be another favorite because that's a life-changing little procedure right there. Um, but anyway, since I started perming my eyelashes, I don't have to use waterproof mascara to kind of hold the curl all day long, which is amazing because it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to remove waterproof mascara every single day. Definitely make sure to get the one in the yellow packaging, which is the rock edition, because it thickens my lashes so beautifully. It makes them super long, very out there, closest to that false looking lash look that I've ever gotten with a mascara, love it. A setting spray that I have been really loving this year is this one by Smashbox. This is the Photo Finish Primer Water. And since I wear powder foundation so often, I always feel like I need to finish off with a setting spray to get rid of that powdery, super matte look and kind of add a little bit of dewiness and luminosity back into my skin and make it look more natural. Powder can tend to be very unnatural looking, so I do almost every single day spritz my face with the Photo Finish Primer Water. I know it says it's a primer water, but you can definitely use it over your makeup, not only under it. And last but not least, oh wait, not yet, not yet. I was about to move on to lips, but really quickly, eyeliners, the only three that I use this year. So 
Holy Grail one is definitely the Kat Von D tattoo liner. I love it. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. I feel like it's so dark. It's not waterproof, but it's water resistant. I touch my eyes a lot throughout the day and it never smudges on me. I also really, really love the Physician's Formula. This is the two-in-one lash booster eyeliner and growth serum. It doesn't really grow your lashes. Don't fall for that, but it is an amazing eyeliner. All of these kind of have a calligraphy style pen. Very easy to work with. I also love the one by Jessie's Girl and it doesn't have a name. Why am I getting out of breath? I'm getting excited. And last but not least, we are gonna talk about lip products. This was definitely the hardest for me to narrow down. I was gonna show you guys some of the brighter shades, some of the darker shades that you have seen me rocking here on my channel, but basically I had a rule. If I have not worn it at least 10 times throughout the past year, I'm not gonna show it in this video. All of these lip colors right here, I've used 10, 15, 20 times throughout the year. They are my absolute cream of the crop. So first we're gonna talk about lip liner. Basically the lip liner that I wear with almost every single lip look is this one right here. This is by MAC and it's called Boldly Bare. It's kind of like um, a warm toned, I'm gonna, it's very similar to my lip color, um, but it's a little bit more warm toned instead of pink. And I have a almost an exact dupe for it. This is by LA Girl and it's called their Endless Lip Liner in the shade Natural. You guys, if you are looking for a lip liner that will not budge, I don't know what it is that they put in this stuff. It is so freaking amazing. It lasts all day long, a lot longer than the MAC one, and it's like $4, but I do have to order it online, which is not fun. So those are my two holy girl lip liners, and now we're gonna move on to lips. I have one, two, three, four, five, six to show you guys. The only lipstick, everything else is liquid lipsticks, because since they came into my life, I haven't been able to put them down. The only lipstick that I still use is by MAC Velvet Teddy. It's a beautiful, it's kind of like a Kylie Jenner color. It's a very, very sexy color. It's a brownish mauve. Still love it. I use this on those days where I don't want to bother with a liquid lipstick, but to be honest with you guys, I pretty much still always want to bother with a liquid lipstick. One of the very first liquid lipsticks that I ever started experimenting with are the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. This one right here is in the shade Abu Dhabi. Love the color. I will be honest, I don't love the fact that it does not set very, very matte and it's not as long lasting as some of the other shades, but it is still one that I reach for a lot on kind of natural makeup days. So I definitely had to mention that one. Next up is Truffle by Dose of Colors. Definitely one of my most longest lasting liquid lipsticks. Love the color. You guys are gonna see that they kind of all will start to look like each other. I love those pinky mauve, brownie undertone nude colors. Ofra Cosmetics Pasadena wore this a lot last year. A little bit on the darker side. This one has more of a mousse texture to it, so it does not dry out my skin at all. Love it. Kat Von D Lolita, definitely one on the darker side. It's kind of like a mauve purple, pretty much like all of them. I get so many compliments when I wear this on Instagram and even here on my channel. And last but not least, Anastasia Beverly Hills Pure Hollywood. This was an obsession last January and it kind of just came back into my life about three months ago and I became obsessed with it all over again. It's right here. It's the most perfect dusty mauve color. It is what is on my lips today paired with the natural lip liner by LA Girl. Love it, love it, absolutely die for it. And that is everything. If you made it through to the absolute end of this video, you are the real MVP. I am starting to get sick of hearing my own voice and I got another video to film after this one. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Again, these are the products that if my makeup collection exploded, if somebody stole it, if something happened to it, these are the products that I would run out and get basically the same exact night. They are that good. All right, guys, I'm going to go before I lose my voice here. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Mwah.